With your first news at 5 Sports, here's Jeff Roberts. Going into the All-Star break, the Twins were a game under 500 and barely hanging on to first place in the American League Central. Since the All-Star break, Minnesota has been one of the best clubs in baseball. Seven wins in nine games. They've scored five or more runs in eight, eight of those nine and held a two-game division lead coming into Sunday. The Twins have won five times against the White Sox this summer in eight outings. Chicago really shut down Target Field for most of this one. Eloy Jimenez is the first one to silence the stadium. He goes yard to left center. Chicago would add two more and take the lead 3-0 in the early going. That's where the score stood until the ninth. In the home half of that ninth, Minnesota's offense shows up. Willie Castro puts one in the gap with two runners on. It brings around a run, and Minnesota's deficit is just two with two runners in scoring position. Next batter is Carlos Correa. It's not going to be a game-tying knock, but he gets the job done. Ryan Jeffers hustles in to score with no one out in the inning. Minnesota's within one run. Two batters later is going to be Alex Kirilov. The lefty sprays one down the left field line. It's two bagger that's good enough to score the game tying run. Late inning heroics from the Twins tied at three. We go to extras in the away half of the tenth. Tim Anderson, he sends one to the right center field gap. He brings in Chicago's fourth run of the game and the run that regains the lead. 4 3 White Sox. Bottom of 10, Minnesota ties it up on one of the most unconventional ways. Kyle Farmer gets it just out of the infield, but because the defender dove for the ball, Joey Gallo is able to hustle in and score. The game is tied at four. The next scoring would come, with, uh, come courtesy of Ryan Jeffers in the 12th. Two runners in scoring position with no outs. A base hit to right center. 5-4 the final. Minnesota comes from behind to complete the sweep of the White Sox. They're now five games over 500 and are a league best 8-2 and two since the All-Star break. Minnesota welcomes in Seattle tomorrow through Wednesday. It's been smooth sailing for the Twins since the All-Star break. How about the rest of the Central? Minnesota holds three games over the Guardians. Detroit is the only other AL Central team with a winning record in the second half. They've won six of ten. Chicago and Kansas City sit at the bottom 12 games back and 25 games back, respectively. Uh, after this weekend, every MLB team is past the 60% mark of the regular season. Just two and a half months remain before the postseason. For the 151st time, the Open Championship has a champion. It was a weekend full of rain, frustration, and moments that made even the world's best golfers look kind of new to the game. Brian Harmon was the only player to finish double digits under par and in dominant fashion claimed his first major. Not only was Harmon the only golfer to finish double digits under par, he was the only player to shoot under par every single day. He went four under on Thursday and six under on Friday to make the cut. His lead had grown to five strokes after moving day yesterday, and he ended up winning by six. Look how far ahead Harmon ended up being. That's even with four tied for second, all shooting under par today. He earned every bit of his $3 million prize. It's the ninth time in the past 25 years that a golfer has won a major by six or more strokes. Some other notable names in the top 10, Day, Rom, Straka, and Kim all finished seven under. Rory finishes tied for sixth. It's his ninth top 10 finish in 14 outings this season. In local sports, another legacy Sabre is continuing athletically in college. Brooklyn Brendel signed with Bismarck State College this weekend. She'll play women's basketball for the Mystics. Brendel averaged just under six points a game with the Sabres this winter. That's all for sports. We'll be right back.